Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered tonight. Feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. Lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. We are currently in session E1, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and kick it off to our first representative from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. Hi everybody, uh, I hope you can see my screen. My name is Carmen Smith and I am from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what it's like to be a Saluki in these six minutes. Um, and give you, I think, what I think are the most important takeaways about SIUC. So to kind of start off, um, SIUC is what we call a mid-size school. So we serve about 11,000, 10,000 undergraduate students here at SIUC. And that means that even though we're a little bit smaller than the national average, we are able to offer a lot of really cool hands-on learning opportunities. So that 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio that we have, like I said, it does mean we're a little bit smaller than the national average, but that means that at an R2 research institution, you can start doing research projects your first year on campus. So your very first semester when you come to SIU, you can get involved in research and paid research too, which is really cool. We offer over 200 programs. And like I said, there are a ton of hands-on learning opportunities all over campus. Uh, opportunities like our VR labs and podcasting labs in the liberal arts. We've got an entire research park where you can go work as a research assistant and do tons of different types of research. And we also have our Touch of Nature Wildlife Center where you can go get some sort of hands-on learning experience and do some leadership building out in nature, which is really cool because we are in the middle of the Shawnee National Forest. So there's a lot of biodiversity hanging out around Carbondale. If you're not interested in the research or you kind of want something a little more laid back for your weekends, we also have over 300 registered student organizations and clubs. And these can go from as professional as you want to as casual as you want. I always love to tell people about a couple of specific examples just to show kind of the diversity of interests that we serve on campus. We have almost anything you could think of being interested in, we have a club for it. Um, even as specific as medieval jousting. We have a club for medieval jousting. Um, we have clubs where people cook food from movies and animes and they eat that food together. So they can be really fun and really casual or you can join academic organizations or professional organizations to help you kind of break into your field. We also have tons of service opportunities on campus as well. So we have organizations that train service dogs and organizations that go do controlled burns in the Shawnee National Forest to help the wildlife and to help keep forest fires under control. So like I said, anything that you could think of being interested in, if we don't have a club for it, it's pretty easy to start one. I also want to give you a few quick facts really fast about the financial stuff, because that's important too. Um, we offer at SIU truth and tuition, which means that starting your first year on campus, you your tuition rate is locked in for four years. So from the day that you start to the day that you graduate in four years, your tuition remains the same. Your fees might go up a little, but that tuition is stable. 
which is really nice. We also offer in-state tuition for all domestic students. So if you're hanging out kind of close to that Illinois, Missouri border on the Missouri side or Indiana, maybe um, we offer in-state tuition still. We don't forget about you. All of our domestic students pay the same price, which is really great. We also offer about, this number says 10 million, but it's actually a little bit higher than that. Um, we actually offer about $16 million now in scholarships and grants annually, which is great because that's money that you don't have to pay back. So think about it as sort of a way to finance your education with those $16 million in scholarships and grants. And it's not something you have to worry about in five years or 10 years. About 92% of our students receive some form of financial assistance. And we also offer something really cool for students um, in our lower income areas. So if you're a student who maybe isn't in, in the higher end of income, um, we offer something called the Saluki Commitment. So if you are a low income student who is really concerned about how you're gonna finance college, we offer a Saluki Commitment, which will kind of bridge the gap between what your financial aid gives you and sort of what you're missing. So that will supplement your tuition as well. Um, it's a fantastic program. We offer it to both transfers and freshmen too. I have shared with you a little bit about the freshman scholarship opportunities. Um, if you would like, I can also email or share later on the transfer scholarship opportunities as well, um, but we do require sort of our minimum admission GPA for automatic admission is a 2.75. If you have below a 2.75, don't worry, there are opportunities for you to be admitted to SIU as well. Um, but at the 2.75 is where our automatic scholarships start. So you can get a merit scholarship with a 2.75 GPA and it goes up from there. So if you're automatically admitted, you're automatically getting at least $1,500 a year, which is really nice. We also offer two competitive scholarships here at SIU. So we have the University Excellence Scholarship that um, is an automatic merit award, but we also have the Chancellor Scholarship. So if you're interested and have a 3.8 GPA or above, you can compete for that and then an upgrade to your University Excellence Scholarship. Other than that, I don't have much more for you. Um, thank you so much for being here today. And don't forget that our application is free through October 31st. Great, thank you. The next representative is from Illinois College. Hello, everyone. I am getting my screen set up to share. Um, thank you. My name is Frankie Kimmel. I am an um, admission counselor from Illinois College here to talk to you about IC. So, give me one second. There we go. I think my computer was just being a little slow there. Um, Illinois College, we are a small school um, around 1,100 students, um, so right over that 1,000 student mark um, with students representing 30 states and 18 foreign countries. Um, our big thing that we always say is we want students to graduate ready. That's kind of our catchphrase. Um, so what that means is while you're at IC, we want you to have the best four years that you can. We want you to have that total college experience, but we also want to make sure that we're preparing you for life after IC. Um, and that you're kind of ready to tackle the world after you leave Illinois College. Um, so we are located in Jacksonville, Illinois, which is on the western side of the state. Um, we are about a half hour away from Springfield. Um, we have a great little town square with some great local restaurants um, for students to go to, coffee shops, places to get juice and smoothies. Um, Jacksonville is a small community with just um, a population of around 25,000 people, but it has everything that you need for a small college town. Um, you know, it has um, everything kind of local that you would need um, shopping wise, grocery shopping wise, restaurants. And like I said, Springfield is just a quick drive away um, at 30 minutes and students are allowed to have vehicles on campus, um, which is really great. So um, students can travel together, go with their friends and things like that and go over to Springfield um, and do some shopping over there and um, go to restaurants over there as well. 
Um, we are really big on hands-on learning or experiential learning. Uh, we have guaranteed hands-on learning experiences um, for all of our students at Illinois College. Um, students will definitely take part in internships. Um, most students take part in at least one internship, but a lot of students also take part in multiple internships throughout their time at IC, which is really great because we wanna make sure that we're getting you in your field early on that way you're getting all sorts of experience. So again, when you leave Illinois College, you're prepared to tackle a job, you're prepared to tackle graduate school, you know, going to med school, whatever it is that you wanna do. Um, we also wanna make sure that students are getting involved on campus. We have over 80 student organizations that students can get involved with, which is really great. So there's something for everyone. And if you have a specific club you're interested in and we don't have it on campus, you can absolutely start your own organization as well by just getting a couple of friends and a faculty or staff advisor um, and then you can start the um, organization as well. We also have great options for international travel. So we have study abroad, um, which is that um, where you'd be gone for an academic semester or a whole academic year. But then we also have our breakaway trips, which are shorter two to three week trips um, that students are able to take in groups with professors um, that are academically focused. They're really great because like I said, they're shorter trips. So they usually happen um, at the very beginning of summer at the end of spring. Um, and a lot of students take part in those because all of our students also receive a thousand dollars that they get to put towards one breakaway if they choose to go on one, which is really, really great. Um, and they are planning some for our upcoming 2022 um, academic year. Hopefully they get to take those, we'll see. Um, but some of those are going to New Zealand, um, Argentina, Spain, Japan, the Netherlands, and to the islands of Guadalupe and Puerto Rico. So some great opportunities for travel. And then we also are really big on student faculty research, making sure that students and professors get the chance to do research together. Um, and again, this is great, especially if you're interested in going to grad school, because you can show that you haven't only learned about the research, but you actually know how to do research, which is really, really great. Um, as for academics, we have over 50 plus um, majors and programs. Um, we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of around 17 students. Again, you're getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, especially being at a small school with just over a thousand students. So professors, um, faculty, staff on campus really get to know your name. They get to know what you're about, what you're interested in, and they're there, they're there to help you and make sure that you're succeeding at IC, but then also make sure again that you're going to graduate ready and succeed afterwards too. We are also um, Division Three for NCAA with uh, 20 NCAA Division Three um, athletic teams, and we are the home of the Blue Boys and the Lady Blues. Um, I always suggest if you are interested in athletics, the best person that you can talk to is the coach. Um, all of our coaches' information is on our athletic website, um, and I always suggest reaching out to the coach if you're interested at all in competing in uh, Division Three NCAA athletics. They would be the best people to kind of answer your questions and talk to you um, and tell you what it's all about. Uh, some important things, our application is currently open. Um, we have our own um, website for applying. We also accept the Common App and the Coalition App. Um, our application is free, so it is free to apply. Um, we are also optional for ACT and SAT test scores. Um, so again, we are test score optional. We do not require that you submit test scores. Um, make sure that you're submitting your high school transcripts. We take official or unofficial high school transcripts. So you can either have them sent officially from your high school or have them um, or get a copy and then upload that with um, your application. We are also really big on making sure that students visit campus because that's the best way to find out if that's where you wanna go. So I always suggest the campus visit and make sure you're filing your FAFSA, which opens up in um, October and also looking at outside scholarships as well. Um, some last things, um, looking at our tuition and fees, we have some great merit-based scholarships. All students are awarded merit-based scholarships. Um, textbooks are also included in our tuition, so you don't have to worry about paying for textbooks out of pocket. They're included in tuition when being scholarships help to cover those. And then we also have a finish in four program guarantee, which means that we guarantee that you will graduate in four years. We also partner with the Dream USA for um, undocumented students um, to help them uh, with their college application process too. All right, and that's all. Um, just your next steps to check in with your um, email. Make sure you're keeping in touch with your counselor. If that would be me or another counselor, visit in person and file your FAFSA. Thanks so much, everyone. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button. Our representatives are here to answer your questions. And if you have a specific question, we encourage you to include the school name. The next representative is from, sorry about that. Uh, the next representative is from North Park University. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen here. All right. Um, my name is Erin Matanti. I'm the Assistant Director of Arts Improvement at North Park University in Chicago. Um, I also work with students of all territories, or all majors, uh, in undergrad and graduate as well. Um, just want to give you a little bit of information about North Park here. I'll start with our location. We're located in the North Park neighborhood. Um, so we're kind of nestled on the north side of Chicago, we're about eight miles north of downtown. Um, it is a neighborhood. Uh, we're located in a neighborhood, so there's a, a, a large community aspect on our campus. Our student population for undergrads in particular is around 1,700 students. So we're a small liberal arts community. Um, our student ratio is 12 to 1. Our faculty to student ratio, about 17 is the average class size. So small, intimate experience uh, through our institution. Our core values for North Park is that we are Christian, city-centered, and intercultural. Um, that's part of our mission. Um, North Park in particular, though, it's interesting being a Christian institution, we, we do have students that come through the, the doors that, you know, come from other faiths or have no faith at all. So we're really unique in that regards. Um, like I mentioned, we're liberal arts, so we have a wide variety of programs uh, that are available. Um, some of our flagship programs, important programs, uh, popular programs is nursing and business. Uh, some other unique programs that we have is criminal justice and athletic training. Um, but again, we have about 40 plus majors, so we, we have a wide variety there for our students. Um, we bring in about a third of our students, or excuse me, our freshmen that come through our doors about a third of them are STEM related. So we built this beautiful science building <laughs> for those students. Um, so we're very proud of that as a small private institution. We also renovated our music building. I recruit for the arts, I have to say this, <laughs> um, Hanson Hall. So we're very proud of as that as well. And what's unique about that is we have students that participate in the arts, but then also can major in the sciences. Uh, mathematics, uh, humanities. So we, we're, we're very proud of that as well. Um, we're academically and culturally diverse um, as a student population. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of the academic, academics, we have students that range from a 4.0, students that fall below the 2.75 mark. There's a wide variety of students. It's all about the fit. Um, in terms of our cultural diversity, we're very proud about two years ago, we became a Hispanic serving institution. Um, so again, that, that's one of our, our key items here. We're also D3. Um, so um, I work with a number of the coaches, even being in the arts, I work with a number of the coaches and they're very intentional about making sure students uh, have what they need to be successful at North Park. We're always happy to connect you with a coach. Um, uh, about 65% of our incoming freshmen I'll live on campus, but we do have about 70% of our students that commute. Um, so it's kind of a mixed group at North Park. Uh, number of scholarships, they're competitive, I, you know, with, uh, with I think a lot of, um, you know, small private institutions. Um, being in, in Chicago, we do provide a value with our tuition rate. Um, merit scholarships, like I mentioned, that are based off a of GPA, were test optional this year. Um, but we also provide music scholarships, art, theater, uh, journalism, uh, a lot of different ways to package you. Um, we're also FAFSA friendly and we also work with our undocumented community. Um, so we're, we're there to help in any which way we can. The goal is if it's your fit and you feel like you wanna be part of the North Park community, we're there to help you as best as we can to make that successful for you. Um, our application is open uh, for fall 2022. I can't believe it. Um, we technically um, have a free application, which is great all year, but we're also common app friendly, um, rolling admissions. So 
Uh, we're happy to work with students in any which way. Some students decide to come later, some come earlier making those decisions, and we're happy to help with that process. Thanks for having me and let me know how I can help. Great, thank you. The next representative is from Lewis University. Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Olson. I am the Associate Director of Freshman Admissions at Lewis University. So thank you for attending these sessions with us. Um, so just to kind of get us started, we are located in Romeoville, Illinois, about 30 minutes south from Chicago. So we are near like Bolingbrook, Naperville, uh, Plainfield, Joliet area. <clears throat> at Lewis University, we are a Catholic LaSallian institution. So our mission is your success. So we promote the development of the complete student through the pursuit of wisdom and justice. So basically what this means is that we are trying to uh, develop you as uh, a person, but also within your academics. So we try our best to make you what we call a master learner. So we teach you everything from the liberal arts, humanities, and also your intended major. We are a mid-sized university where we have about 4,100 undergraduate students, but a total population of 6,200 students enrolled. So everything with the rest of that is either uh, your master's program, students getting certifications in either education, uh, nursing, or aviation. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we are a mid-sized university. So our average class size is about 23 to 25 students per classroom for your gen eds. Once you start getting more into your major specific courses, those start going down a little smaller to about 18 to 20 students per classroom. Uh, depending on your intended major and different labs, sometimes it even gets down to about 8 to 12 students per classroom. We try to keep it as small as possible so that way you have an opportunity um, to interact with your professors as much as possible and get your questions answered within the classroom. We don't have any teaching assistants or grad assistants teaching the courses. It all comes from the professor themselves. So this gives you an opportunity, as I mentioned, to make those connections with your professor, but also get your foot in the door later on in making those connections with them, but also different alumni and internship opportunities through your professors, because they have all different connections that they are able to utilize in order to help you progress with your programs. Um, and the opportunities of internships, research, or even straight up job opportunities while you're in school. <clears throat> to help you move along throughout the four years, there are so many ways for you to be supported and encouraged um, within our university. We have something called CASE. This is the Center for Academic Success and Enrichment. These are advisors and faculty members that are here to help you progress through the four years. They will help you kind of narrow down your search process if you're an undecided student, but they'll also help you with your academics. So this is where you'll find all of the, uh, the tutoring, the, um, as I mentioned, if you are an undecided student, you'll find advisors up there. They can help with your class scheduling as well. You have career services who will help you find internships, job opportunities, research opportunities, and also They'll help you um, do mock interviews as well. So they'll review your resume and they'll put you through these pretend interviews. So this way you have an opportunity to kind of get the jitters out. We also hold two different uh, career expos each year, one in the fall and one in the spring for you to interview and talk with professionals that are looking to hire students right out of school. We also have Flyers Get Hired, which is another job website that we utilize for only Lewis students. And then we have our health and counseling services that is completely free for students to utilize while they're in school here. We are a test optional school and we have a free application now. So the first step in becoming a flyer is filling out that application, either through the Common App or through our Lewis uh, traditional application. Like I mentioned, they are both free and they are both open now. And um, we are test optional. So you don't have to submit test scores if you do not want to. The only program that is not test optional is our direct admit nursing program, which you will have to submit test scores for, either ACT or SAT scores. 
uh, completely up to you on which one you want to submit. If you do submit test scores, it does give a little bit more of a boost for scholarship consideration, which I'll get into a little bit later in this presentation. So Lewis can be a place for you. So one thing that we like to uh, emphasize within our programs and at the Lewis University is the flexibility within all of our programs. So within our programs, we have 80 plus majors and minors. So the nice thing about our programs is that you could start your major specific courses your freshman year. So you can take those on top of some of your gen ed courses along with the major specific courses. If you're interested in aviation, we get you into those planes your freshman year. This way you get that hands-on experience as early as possible. So that way you are within the field and you understand if you like being in this field or not before you get into junior year and realize, hey, maybe I wanna switch some things around. This comes in the form of different internships, research opportunities and job opportunities, making sure you are comfortable within those programs. You can see here, these are just a list of our top majors here, such as nursing, aviation, business, criminal justice, computer science, and psychology. But there's so many more there um, or that we have available that you can explore. So another big thing about our campus is being involved. We have so many different clubs and organizations on our campus that you are able to utilize. We also have 13 different, I'm sorry, 12 different, different residence halls on campus. Uh, for students to live on campus, um, for specifically for our incoming freshmen, but we also do um, help commuter, commuter students as much as possible by giving them an atmosphere within our, uh, within our campus. So they have everything available to them as a resident student would have. I also mentioned that our scholarships would range from $13,000 to $18,000 per year, but those are looking to go up um, on a merit-based scholarship uh, sense for this application cycle. So that application is open up now. We will start reviewing in about a week or two. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to say thank you for your time. <laughs> no, no problem. I just wanted to make sure you were at a good stopping point. No, thank you so much. Um, again, so much great information shared with us so far. Um, and so again, just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, um, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button. Um, any question about the college application process, or even if you have a question for a specific institution represented here, um, to also, um, we also encourage you to include the school name. Our last representative, um, our last school for this session, um, but certainly not least, is from Northwestern University. Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Alyssa Martinez. I'm from Northwestern University. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Northwestern. Today, I'll give you a broad overview of what makes Northwestern so special, I'll give you some insight into the admissions process. If any point, if you have questions, again, feel free to put them in the chat. So let's start with our location. We are located in Evanston, Illinois. Evanston is the cuisine capital of the North Shore. So there are plenty of coffee shops, restaurants to take advantage of. Our campus is located within Evanston on the lakefront. It's full of beautiful state-of-the-art facilities. And then it's just north of Chicago, Illinois. So we refer to our location as a trifecta because we have all three. We have a city in our backyard, we have a great college town, and we have a great campus. At Northwestern, you really get the best of both worlds. And while our location is great, our students are really the heart and soul of absolutely everything we do. We have about 8,000 undergraduate students and they really come from all over. They come from all 50 states and 95 different countries. And so the diversity on campus really enhances the educational experience here in the classroom because of our six to one faculty ratio. This six to one ratio means that most, if not all of the classes that you take at Northwestern are gonna be small discussion-based classes where you're have that opportunity to learn from both your professors and your peers. At Northwestern, we operate on the quarter system. That means students take classes in the fall, the winter, and the spring. Each term spans the course of five weeks and students will take four courses per term. That means students take 12 courses per year. The quarter system provides a lot of flexibility for our students. 
and it allows them to take advantage of all six of our undergraduate schools and really get to explore all their personal, professional, and academic interests. And they explore those interests, again, across all six of our schools. Our schools are projected up here. We have the College of Arts and Sciences in the middle. That is our largest school, home to about half of our student population. And then surrounded by that school, you'll see six of our other specialized schools. To apply to Northwestern, you must select one, but you are absolutely not boxed into that one school as we like to say, and is in our DNA. And so it's not uncommon for students to pick up majors, minors, and concentrations across all six schools. Here at Northwestern, we really value experiential learning or the process of learning by doing. We donate about $3.5 million every year to undergraduate research, and we have 90 school-based research centers. So if research is something that you're interested in pursuing on campus, it's absolutely something you can do here. In addition to that, we've had over 160 Fulbright study and research grants since 2008. And of course, we offer study abroad. We have over 150 study abroad affiliated programs on all six of the major continents. All students are encouraged to study abroad regardless of school major, um, and students can work really closely with the Office of Global Learning to find a study abroad program that is perfect for them. Northwestern is a place to grow intellectually, but it's also a place to advance your career. So about two thirds of undergraduates here have one or more internships over their four years. And more importantly, 96% of grads secure meaningful post college plans within six months of graduation. And so, we have a lot of different minds and experiences here at Northwestern, as I've mentioned, and that really translates to a robust alumni network that covers a range of industries. Having the purple mafia, as we like to call them, in our back pocket means opportunities to tap into career opportunities and pursue mentorship opportunities as well. Um, the purple mafia, again, works closely with the Office of Career Advancement to make sure that students are finding fits for them and helping them land where they should land at the end of this. And so while that is all great, your time on campus is limited. It's only four years. So let me tell you a little bit more about the experience on campus. We have a really collaborative and engaging culture here at Northwestern. We have over 500 student groups and organizations, and that ranges from culturally focused groups to Big Ten sports. All of that and everything in between, there is something for everyone on our campus. We are also a campus rich in tradition. My personal favorite tradition is exam relief. Now let's move on and talk about how to apply so that you're all set up for success when you apply in the fall. Um, you can apply either through the Common App or the Coalition application, either or it's up to you. To apply, you need to submit four different things. You need to submit your high school transcripts, you need to submit your SAT or ACT scores. This year, actually, I should mention, we are test optional. You'll submit letters of support from your school, so letters of recommendation from your teachers. You need two, one from a school counselor and one from a core subject teacher, and your application essays. You'll have your main essay, and then you also will answer a supplemental Why Northwestern essay. All of these application parts should be submitted either by our early decision deadline, which is November 1st, or our regular decision deadline, which is January 3rd. Before I go, I want you all to understand something, and that is that Northwestern is accessible to you. We meet 100% of students' demonstrated financial need, and we meet that for U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and DACA recipients. Meeting 100% of students' financial need means that based on the information students submit in the FAFSA, as well as the CSS profile, we will determine your estimated family contribution cost. Northwestern will cover the difference between the price of tuition and that cost, and we will cover it loan free, meaning that you are paying for Northwestern what you can afford to pay. 64% of undergraduates receive financial aid, and the average aid package is about $53,000 a year. And so lastly, before I leave you, I just wanna share some ways to connect with us. We are all over social media, um, so please feel free to keep in touch. Thank you again for your time today and your interest in Northwestern. Great, thank you. Um, and so many great questions coming in through our Q&A. So thank you um, for uh, bringing the questions and um, uh, for our representatives for being here. We do have some time left. And so at this point, we're gonna go ahead now and pivot into our Q&A portion of this session. I invite all our representatives to please go ahead and turn on your cameras to get ready to unmute yourselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the collar search process. What advice would you give someone going through the collar search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented in. Okay, 
Okay, well, I will start. Um, I think that the best piece of advice I could give to somebody going through the college admissions process is to find somewhere that really feels like home. I think that's the most important part. Find somewhere where you feel like you're gonna be comfortable, where you can see yourself for four years or five years. Um, it's really important to make sure that you are somewhere where you feel like you really have a place for sure. So, I mean, all of those other factors of course are important, but I think the most important thing is just find somewhere that you know speaks to you and makes you feel really good about your decision. Absolutely, piggybacking off of that because mine kind of relates. I definitely suggest um, visiting colleges um, and visiting different types of schools and, you know, visiting the schools that you apply to that are top in your list, because that's really going to be the best way to find out whether it is a good fit for you. So if it's feasible for you, if you have the opportunity, I definitely suggest, like I said, visiting colleges and definitely visiting different types of colleges, visit large, mid-size, small, just so you can really get a range of, um, you know, different places and, um, visit rural places, visit, you know, schools and cities and really figure out what, Kind of fits for you and what you would like to call home for the next four years. In terms of advice, I would say try to connect with a professor at your your top top choice schools. I know um, every school is a little different with that process, but if you can try to have a virtual appointment, even or just email. Professors get very busy. <laughs> I'm a former adjunct professor myself. I did that for many years. Um, but I, I find that it's super important that you try to see who or meet the person that's actually going to be teaching you because that's part of the reason why you're going to school. So that's my advice. Uh, my best advice would be do your research. You know, It kind of encompasses everything that's kind of been already mentioned. Um, but you really want to do your research on a few different things. Does this specific school have a good outcome for the program that you're looking to go into? Or are you just applying to those schools because your friends are going there? So you want to do your research, making sure that uh, you have a good outcome for the program that you're looking to go into. Yeah, so my advice echoes a lot of what's been said, but really take advantage of all of the resources offered to you and presented to you, not only by your counselors, but also by the schools themselves. Um, I'll speak for our university specifically, but we've really amped up all of those virtual offerings for students. And so take advantage of that, scroll through a YouTube page, listen to a student panel, um, listen to advice from counselors, all of that is really gonna help you um, along the way. Great advice. Um, it's always great to hear directly from those who work at the respective institutions to share advice, to offer suggestions. So uh, great, thank you. Our next question here is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I think what I want students to remember about SIU Carbondale is the just the the kind of the enthusiasm um so if you ever take a campus visit or you watch one of those virtual tours there's so much enthusiasm especially in our chancellor and in the students that get to work in the admissions office everyone's really enthusiastic about being able to be first of all on campus we've been off campus for so long but second of all being able to just be in a community that's so supportive of each other and works so well together. So I think the one thing I want people to remember about SIU is just how enthusiastic we are and it's genuine enthusiasm. I think if there's one thing I would want students to remember about Illinois College or take away um, about Illinois College from today is how supportive and community-based our campus is and our campus community. Um, I kind of mentioned it before in my presentation that our thing is we want students to graduate ready. So we want you to be able to succeed in your four years at IC and succeed after your four years at IC. We do a really good job at doing that, making sure that almost 100% of our students are in a job or in a graduate program within a year of leaving IC. 
you know, all of our students get academic coaches that they are paired with, which is really great for first year students, make that transition from high school to a four year college. Um, so we are just trying to do everything that we can in all of our different offices on campus to make sure that students are supported, um, that they feel welcomed and that they feel like they're on a community and um, a part of a community as well. Um, so with North Park, um, this is something I talked about today actually in the office that North Park um, is very intentional about creating relationships, relationships between the student and the professor, uh, relationships, you know, among, uh, you know, admissions and the student that's coming in, obviously we're creating relationships, uh, relationships from student to student, um, and then building those relationships in the surrounding community. I mean, we're community-based as well. Um, the fact that we're in the city, we have a lot of access uh, to the city, um, but also a part of a neighborhood. So relationships, that's, that's what we're really intentional about. I would say that one thing that you should remember about Lewis, I wasn't able to cover it very much, but we are a small school with big opportunities. Uh, so we have high quality uh, professors along with high quality labs and internship opportunities. So I'm um, thinking that you might have to go to a bigger state school um, to get those larger opportunities. Lewis has those to offer due to our location and our larger alumni uh, connections along with the connections our professors have as well. So that's a that's a one good takeaway uh, from this one. Yeah, I think my big takeaway is that Northwestern really can be a place for you. I often get asked, you know, what type of student are you looking for? And the answer is, is that there's not one prototype. Our students really come from all over. Um, and our students on campus just pursue so many different paths. Like there's just so many different ways to do Northwestern. There's not just one way. And so you will find your fit here on campus, um, no matter who you are and what your, where your interests lie. Great. Um, we're going to try to see if we can squeeze in one more here um, before we end. And the last question here is, what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? I think the the biggest myth that I that comes to mind when I think about the college admissions process is that it's really hard and I, I don't think that's true. I think that if you're working with schools like you've seen present tonight, these representatives are fantastic. They're doing a great job telling you what kind of opportunities you have and things like that. It's not as hard as it sounds. It can be overwhelming sometimes because there are so many opportunities, but that doesn't mean that it's hard because if you're working with people like these, it's really easy to get all the information you need to get keep that great attitude when you're working with people that are so happy and excited to be working with you. So I, I think it's a lot easier than a lot of people take it for, if that makes sense. I think one thing that I hear from students that have come to college after going through the college admission process is that they wish they would have reached out more and asked for help more and that they felt that they kind of had to go it alone or figure it out themselves or that they didn't want to be bothersome or didn't want to, um, you know, cause any trouble or anything like that. So I always say that, you know, as admission counselors, we're here to help the best that we can. We're here to help any, we're here to answer any questions you have um, and just do what we can to make the process easy on you and make sure that it's not difficult. Um, so don't think that you're being a bother. It's, it's our job. It's what we're here to do. We want to make sure that you succeed and that you find your right fit, um, no matter with, at, with, if it's with one of our schools or somewhere else, we just wanna make sure that you end up at the right place that's best for you. And so we are here to answer your questions and do what we can to make sure we're helping you. So school is an investment <laughs> and it can be downright expensive um, depending where you're going, you know, looking at different schools and their price points. Um, I would say, that yes, school is expensive, but it is possible. Um, it is possible to find the right fit for yourself. 
and, and be able to afford it. It takes a lot of work. There's millions of dollars out there that aren't utilized, outside scholarships, all that kind of, I mean, there's so much funding out there. And I know, with, you know, not every school will, will be the best fit, but I really believe there's a way to do it. So uh, kind of in response to Frankie, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions about funding. We're, we are here, we're accessible um, as, as individuals, as people that have been through the process. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my two cents. I would say uh, kind of piggybacking off of Frankie here is that we as counselors, we aren't strangers. We don't wanna be strangers to you. So we, we encourage these questions. We encourage you to do things like this. So reach out to us as much as possible. We don't want you to feel like you're being a bother or um, that these strangers don't know who I am. We know who you are. Like, although we're looking at a lot of different applications, we know who our students are and we, really like to connect with you on a personal level. So feel free to reach out at any time. Um, so I think a common myth that exists is that you have to write the essay you think we want to read, and that's absolutely not the case. Please write the essay you want to write. Your essay is one of the few opportunities you have in your application to talk to us directly and to use your own voice. And so take advantage of that opportunity as much as possible. Awesome. And that's a great way to end. Um, it is, there are so many myths out there. And so it's always great uh, to hear directly um, from uh, our representatives here. And again, just really bring a different um, perspective. So thank you um, for the time. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Again, so much information shared. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We have now reached the conclusion of this session. As we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is extremely helpful. And this is one of many college presentations being offered tonight. So feel free to check the website for the entire schedule. And lastly, this session is being recorded along with many others and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Again, thank you all, and we really appreciate you being here. Have a great night.